Hey guys, what's going on? Lucky Assassin here, and this is video just kind of explaining the kind of stuff that you should be looking forward to and stuff you'll need to know about Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So obviously I've got some Assassin's Creed Unity gameplay in the background right now, and this isn't actually my gameplay. I'll link the uh, the guy that recorded this gameplay in the description. Um, but yeah, for some reason my PC just didn't like dx tory um recording unity it just wasn't working properly i don't know but yeah i'll leave that guy's link in the description so getting into the video a bit more um i'm really looking forward to syndicate it looks really fun the unity one thing i didn't like was just that the fact that the story wasn't really bigged up i've completed the game on three different platforms and uh well not three different platforms but three different times I've completed the game on two different platforms and I still really don't understand the story that much like it's just not gripping enough it's not kind of interesting enough the character is boring and they just don't really pull you in um, but the only thing that makes up for that is just the awesome scenery I guess but from what I've seen of Syndicate you know it doesn't look like that at all it looks like a really interesting game um, it shows a lot about the character or well, the characters and kind of what their story is which I liked and let's be honest we kind of like it when the main characters are badasses like everyone hated AC3 because Connor was just kind of like oh I'm gonna get revenge for my for my you know burning down my village and stuff like that and it's like Connor we don't care like you know we liked Ezio more when you know, he, he started off about revenge, but then he just kind of goes like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to kill Templars for the hell of it. You know, it's pretty fun. Why not? Let's do it. So, yeah, that's kind of what I'm hoping for Syndicate. Um, but as you all know, hopefully, um, Assassin's Creed Syndicate is going to be released on October the 23rd in most countries. So pretty much that will be the UK, the US, uh, I'd say probably Japan as well. You know, the, the top three pretty much Europe US and Japan and then I'm not really sure about other countries but pretty much everywhere is around uh, that date so you know there'll be the digital and disc based copies will both go on sale so that's one thing that you need to know another is the additions and the extras you get with the different editions so obviously uh, most publishers are creating ever more complicated setups for like editions for games um, but Ubisoft's keeping it pretty relaxed this year so the standard edition obviously just comes with the base copy of the game um, and then that's just the standard price of around 40 to 50 pounds you know you can't know for sure uh, and then it's now available for pre-order obviously um, you know you can pre-order a day before if you wanted to uh, so you can also pre-order on Xbox Store and PlayStation Store digitally um, there's also the syndicate season pass which is separate so you know just season pass on lots of any and all content for the game coming after launch um, and you don't have to purchase every add-on individually so I think that is 20 pounds or 25 pounds um, in the UK and it's 30 dollars in the US um, obviously if you want to buy everything uh, then you can get the Syndicate Gold Edition. So that comes with a se season pass bundled with the disc copy of the game. That's just what the Gold Edition is. Um, but anyone that pre orders Assassin's Creed Syndicate anywhere gets access to the Darwin and Dickens conspiracy mission. So you just get that extra mission straight off the bat. And you also get 10,000 credits in game to use towards uh, the Ubisoft Assassin's Creed Rewards program. Um, so that's kind of like the Uplay kind of thing, but separate so just for Assassin's Creed so you can get cool items and stuff um, okay so the gold edition extras as I said is the exclusive mission um, and the season pass as well so you'll get all the stuff in the future so you don't have to buy anything else um, but you also get access to a long night which is a story focused mission available um, which obviously otherwise you would have to buy uh, and you also get the option to use a permanent experience boost that lets you level 5% faster than what's normal inside the game, which I'm not really a fan of, to be honest. I, I kind of 
don't like that. It's kind of turning it into pay to play, but you know, whatever. I'm not. I'm not that too fast. Um, and then you also get Helix credits, which obviously we've already seen in Unity, but uh, they're also going to be in Syndicate, so you'll get some of those bundled with the Gold Edition as well. Um, there's also the Rooks Edition. I, I'm speaking on the UK's behalf here because I don't know about other countries, but in the UK we've got the Rooks Edition and we've got the uh, Charing Cross Edition. So the Charing Cross Edition comes with like an art book, um, you know, a special case, a figurine, and some other stuff. Um, and that's the most expensive one. That's eighty pounds in the UK. But the Rooks edition is exactly the same, except it comes with a slightly different box, and it just doesn't have the figurine. And that's, I think, almost twenty pounds, fifteen pounds cheaper. So, um, yeah, to be honest, if you're not too fussed about figurines, I get that one. It's really not that much, fifty-five pounds. Um, and well, anyway, that's on. Amazon that I've looked at. So the setting and characters, I've spoken a little bit about this already, but um, so there's going to be two main characters, dropping the French Revolution setting of Unity uh, for like much nicer setting of London, depending on your thoughts on nice, because it is during the Industrial Revolution. Um, so this will be the most modern setting for an AC game we've seen yet, because we haven't been past... I don't know why I'm reiterating that. I pretty much just explained that in one sentence. Um, so they're the Fry twins are the two main characters. Uh, so they're both members of the Assassins, and they go to London to right wrongs because there's a bunch of stuff going going wrong. So they're fed up with the corruption of those in charge. Which who else would that be apart from the Templars? Uh, so the the twins basically build their own gang called the Rooks um, and they just build and build and build kind of like the setting within Brotherhood where you know you go and uh, what's the word you go and recruit assassins so I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to work in this game um, just you know they do that a lot just to stand up to the Templars and uh, overcome the Industrial Revolution I guess uh, so the difference between the two characters is Jacob, the one of the twins, he isn't stealthy. Um, he's kind of the, he's the Ezio of the assassins, so he'll just run out, you know, get br get into brawls in the streets, um, specialises in, like, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and, yeah, he kind of rushes in like a mental geezer. Um, but Evie, the other twin, she's more analytical, so she'll kind of like go through situations in her head before carrying them out. Kind of like the option we had in Unity, but no one ever utilised because who can be asked to kind of plan something out when you can just run in and kill them and run away again. Um, but yeah, they have the same kind of end goal, but they differ quite a lot in their approach. But obviously I'm pretty sure it's something like 50-50 gameplay, so we'll be able to use either of them depending on you know who we enjoy the most we can play uh, so they Ubisoft have already confirmed that their combat and the gadgets that they have reflect their differences in personality which kind of makes sense so uh, Eevee will have more stealthy weapons and you know Jacob will kind of just have his fists because he's a mental mental boy so uh, the gadgets and mechanics of the game um, so having a setting in modern London means kind of embracing more modern conveniences. So Ubisoft thought long and hard about embracing the very real changes happening in London during the time period. So there's train stations all the way through London, so you can actually get on the trains to get to where you're, you know, get to where you need to go faster. Um, the streets of London, obviously, they're packed with people and characters, so they've got a very, uh, a very big kind of population. Um, you can actually race carriages, which I find pretty cool. So you can race carriages against NPCs um, and you can earn extras by solving crimes that the police haven't done, which is uh, pretty interesting. Um, and then some missions will are better suited to either of the twins, so you can pretty much work that out. And some will be mandatory for each twin, which kind of makes sense because they don't want you to play the same character all the way through the game, which I kind of think is good. But you can just switch manually. Um, whenever you want to if you're in free room um, and then what else we got just literally just um, that just some of the mechanics now rather than the, uh, the the gadgets and stuff so you can climb down buildings obviously as in unity um, but 
Unity, they were focusing on climbing down buildings, making it more fun. But Syndicate, they're like, yeah, let's just make getting to the top of buildings more fun. So I don't know really about the haystack kind of thing. They haven't really mentioned it that much. But uh, Jacob now has a special gauntlet so he can zip line up to the tops of buildings. Kind of like the zip line reverse in Tomb Raider, that kind of thing. Um, so he doesn't have to climb if he doesn't want to because, you know, he's a badass. Um, so basically the kind of general idea of the game is you have to take over rival gangs in different areas of London kind of as seen in the trailer that was very prominent you know breaking into a shipping yard and stuff like that, that was pretty interesting um, so you got to conquer rival gangs obviously so you got to take on the gang boss as with any game there's always a boss fight so but saying that they haven't really had much of that in the Assassin's Creed game so it's kind of always just been one you know longing boss in the background um, the only real one that had kind of boss fights is the first one where you kind of take out the guys you needed to get to the end guy. Um, you know, AC2, it was kind of all thrown together like, do I kill this one or this one or this one? I don't know, let's just kill them all. It wasn't really planned out. But yeah, so it's a unique idea that we haven't seen in other Assassin's Creed games, but it's not unique as in the fact of regular gaming. It's always kind of been there. Um, and then... Obviously, we don't have to go out for sea, go out to sea for naval combat as well. So, because the River Thames is so huge, uh, there are some naval mechanics that are going to be in the game. Obviously, not as high end and as prominent in the game as they are in Black Flag, but they are going to be there, which is good for people that uh, enjoyed it in Three and Black Flag. Um, so that's pretty much it for this video i know it's been quite long hopefully uh you haven't got too bored by my ramblings or the gameplay in the background um but yeah to, to me it looks you know it looks like a great game it looks like a must to buy and everything adventure open world kind of game and i'm really hyped for it to be honest it comes out in five days from the time i'm making this video right now and yeah i'm definitely gonna be making some videos on it when it arrives at my house <laughs> so yeah thank you guys for watching i hope this video was useful for you please like comment and subscribe